Hi, my name is Jack Jennings. I'm from Mellon Card Institute of Radiology at Washington University in St. Louis. And I'd like to thank RSNA News for asking me to do this vlog regarding the Moshu trial. Uh, that was a cryoablation trial, international trial on bone cryoablation for pain palliation that was recently published in Radiology Cancer Imaging. So a few questions I was asked to address. One was how does cryoablation provide pain relief for patients with bone metastasis? Well, the etiology of bone cancer pain is multifactorial, uh, felt to be related to osteoclasts, so breaking down a bone mediated bone remodeling, loss of mechanical strength, and activation of mechanos, uh, mechanosensory receptors, production of cytokines and vasopeptides. And in the radiation therapy uh, literature, it's felt that uh, reducing tumor burden and reduction of osteolysis results in relief from bone pain. While there hasn't been multiple, many studies done on this with cryoblation, it's felt to be uh, via the same mechanism. The next question was, in the motion trial, how do you evaluate the efficacy of cryoablation for palliation of pain metastasis in metastatic lesions? Well, the study design had a single primary endpoint and multiple secondary endpoints. The primary endpoint was pretreatment baseline change of worst pain in the last 24 hours. That was from the brief pain index uh, and that was then looking at out from eight weeks to six months. So the BPI short form worst pain was the primary endpoint. And then within this clinically meaningful change was defined as reduction of at least two points of pain in the upper bound of the 95th percent confidence interval uh, with a responder analysis also including those who had stable uh, medication use, which was defined as uh, less than or equal to 25% increase in the morphine equivalent dose. The other things looked at in the trial were performance status uh, based on Karnofsky performance status, also quality of life issue. Uh, quality of life uh, was another thing that was considered uh, in the evaluation of secondary endpoints. Next question was, how does the study hope to demonstrate to insurance companies that cryoablation is a viable option for treatment of bone metastasis? Well, this trial is one of many for cryoablation with the first studies done by my uh, great colleague, Matt Kolstrom at Mayo, uh, both in radiology and then in cancer in 2013, I believe, uh, prospective trials uh, looking at treatment of painful bone lesions, metastatic lesions with cryoablation. And this uh, study was very similar to those that have been previously published in that it showed significant pain relief out to six months. Uh, patients did well. Uh, there were uh, improvement, uh, there were a number of pa patients who were stable or improved pain medications. So this is just another tool in our armamentarium when we're discussing, discussing with patients, medical, radiation, and surgical oncologists, the benefit of percutaneous cryoablation for painful bone metastasis. This kind of goes into the next question was how should radiologists talk with their patients about this option if it's not yet recognized as a treatment? And I think that was the biggest uh, push for this trial was to get more recognition amongst the clinicians, that is the oncologists, radiation oncologists, and surgical oncologists, as well as the patients. The national uh, NCSEN guidelines uh, has a section on adult cancer pain and, you know, bone pain that is not complicated, meaning unstable, there's not an unstable fracture. Recommendations for pain management include ablation of bone lesions. And that's something that is super important when you're addressing the 
uh, third party payers or insurance companies, you know, oftentimes, you know, their, their indications are very outdated. But if you can mention the up to date 2021 NC10 guidelines under adult cancer pain, you will see that ablation is uh, a recommendation by the NC10 guidelines. And that's super important. I can tell you there have been many times that I've done a peer to peer review with insurance companies and I have referenced the NCSN guidelines, and some of which are instructed if people give the NCSN guidelines uh, that it's there that they uh, go ahead and approve the treatment. So I really think that the importance of this uh, being published is to get the word out that this is one of the multidisciplinary treatments for painful osseous metastatic disease and that it's a very uh, minimally invasive technique and that it, there is durable pain relief. Thank you very much. And I wanna thank again, RSNA News for giving me this opportunity. Have a wonderful day.